In this video, we're going to take a closer look at friction, conduction, and induction. We're going to take a quantitative look at friction, conduction, and induction to solve problems involving charge transfer. When we talk about friction, we're talking about one object rubbing against another. When the objects are made of different materials, one of them will usually be more likely to take electrons than the other. We figure out which material is more likely to take electrons by looking at the triboelectric series. It's a table of materials that are ranked by how easily they become charged by friction. The more charge affinity a material has, the more likely it is to steal electrons when rubbed against another material. Think about these three tribo or rubbing events. In the first example, we take neutral pieces of wool and rubber and rub them together. In the second example, we rub neutral rubber on a nylon balloon. Finally, we rub a neutral nylon balloon on our hair. Which materials do electrons move to in these friction events? Electrons tend to go to whichever material has the strongest affinity for them. So when we rub wool and rubber together, wool accepts electrons more easily and takes on negative charge. The law of conservation of charge tells us that charge cannot be created or destroyed. It is just transferred from one place to another. This means the rubber ends up with the same amount of excess positive charge. When neutral rubber and nylon come in contact, since nylon is higher up on the list of electron affinity, it takes electrons from the rubber. And lastly, rubbing a neutral balloon on our hair gives our hair extra negative charge. Electrons are more drawn to hair than to nylon. So you see, we can use the triboelectric series, this table, to find out how charges move when two different materials are rubbed together. We know that electric charge can move just from two objects coming in contact by conduction. Conduction between two objects happens when their charges are unbalanced and can move easily from one object to the other. Specifically, if two conductors, like these metals, of unequal charge touch, electrons will move to balance out the charge on each metal. And at any point throughout the charge transfer, we always have the same number of protons and electrons that we started with. In other words, electric charge is conserved. Here's a practice problem to test our understanding about conduction. Two identical metal spheres rest on insulating platforms on a tabletop. One metal sphere is electrically neutral. The other sphere is given a positive net charge of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 2 coulombs. The spheres are brought into contact with each other. As a result, the first metal sphere becomes charged positively. What is the charge on the sphere that started out neutral? And which of the following occurred during the process? Circle or write down all that apply. A, the metal sphere gains some protons. B, electrons are transferred from the uncharged sphere to the charged sphere. C, the neutral metal sphere loses electrons. D, the overall charge of the system is conserved. E, protons are transferred from the charged sphere to the uncharged sphere. And F, positive electrons are moved between the two objects. Let's start with the second part of the problem. What actions occurred in the charge transfer process? Remember how metals are constructed. Their atoms nuclei, where their protons are, are arranged in a fixed pattern and held tightly in place, while each metal atom in the structure has an electron that can move freely throughout the material. It's not protons that do the moving, but electrons. So A is out. B is correct because the sphere that starts out charged is charged positively. That means negative charge electrons will flow from the uncharged sphere to the charged one to balance out the charge. C is another way of saying B. It's correct. D is true. Though electrons flow from one sphere to the other, the overall electric charge is always conserved. E assumes protons and metals are mobile but we've seen that the way atoms are arranged in metals means they are not. F gets the part about electron transfer right, but electrons have a negative and not a positive charge. Overall, this statement is not correct. 
Now that we have an idea how charge moved, what about the final charge of the spear that started out neutral? Since the two metal spears are identical, we know that once they touch, electrons will rearrange until both spears have an equal charge. And since the charge is conserved, we know the total charge of the two spears at the end will equal the total charge they had at the start. So when the spears touch, the positive charge of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 2 coulombs will be spread evenly across them. Electrons will flow out from the neutral sphere until both spheres have an equal positive charge. The charge of each sphere is half the original charge of the system, or positive 3.2 times 10 to the negative 2 coulombs. Another way a conductor can become charged is by the process of induction. Induction happens when a charged object is brought near, but doesn't touch, a conductor. Because of attraction between opposite charges and repulsion between like charges, the electrons in a conductor will move around when a charged object comes near. The charged object will create an electric field that pushes or pulls the electrons within the conductor. Try out this example. Two uncharged metal spheres of insulating stands are in contact with one another. A negatively charged rod is brought near the left sphere but does not touch it. With the rod held in place, the right sphere is moved so it no longer touches the other sphere. Finally, the rod is moved far away from the spheres. Sketch the spheres on a piece of paper for each of the stages, one through four. At each step in the diagram, draw in the charge distribution of each of the metal spheres. Use plus signs for positive charge and minus signs for negative charge. At each stage, show what type of charge exists and where it is located. Go ahead, press pause, Give it a try, and when you think you have the answer, come back and check your work. Did your diagram end up looking like this? If so, great job. If not, let's solve it together. In our first snapshot, we have two neutral metal spheres in contact. Since neither has a charge in balance, there's no net charge on either one. A net charge of zero means there's an equal number of protons and electrons on both spheres to draw in on the diagram. In the second scene, we've brought a negatively charged rod near the left sphere. Since the spheres are conductors, electrons can flow easily. And in response to the electric field the negatively charged rod makes, electrons flee as far away as they can because the spheres are in contact. That furthest distance is the right side of the right sphere, so the charged rod induces a charge imbalance. Electrons are pushed to the far right leaving a net positive charge of the far left. That's what the plus and minus signs in the diagram mean. At step three, the right sphere has been moved out of contact with the left sphere. We now have two disconnected systems instead of one connected one. And now that they're separated, the spheres have equal and opposite charges. If we add up their charges, we get zero, just like at the beginning when we started with zero net charge. That's the law of conservation of charge in action. The rod continues to draw the positive charges on the left sphere. Those charges come as close as they can to the oppositely charged rod. The right sphere, which like we said, now has an overall charge, wants to spread that charge over its entire surface. The electrons repel each other as far as they can, spreading out over the surface of the sphere. They are still affected by the field created by the rod but their self-repulsion is now a strong effect. Finally, in frame four, we remove the charged rod from the picture. The left sphere has a positive net charge and those charges repel each other and spread out over the sphere. The negative charges on the right sphere will be affected only slightly by the removal of the rod and the redistribution of positive charge on the left sphere. We started with two uncharged metal spheres and induced an overall positive charge on one and a negative charge on the other without ever touching our charged object, the rod, to the spheres. That without ever touching our charge. That's a closer look at friction, conduction, and induction. For more physics in motion, go to our homepage where the entire series is available to you.